Hello, my name is Russell Singer with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. And this brief video will demonstrate for you how to configure the Communication Manager video call admission control features so that you can effectively set up your Communication Manager to limit bandwidth for video calls. So it's important to realize that first of all, all of your administration for video CAC or call admission control is going to be done through the CM SAT interface. And what we have here is the, uh, the IP codec set form, which is where that administration is performed. So the IP codec set form on the first page, when you look at it, you see the audio codecs listed here. And we really don't need to pay too much attention to this first page. We actually want to go to the next page, the second page, which is where all of your video uh, call admission control settings are handled. So you'll notice on page two here, there's a field that says allow direct IP multimedia. And by default, this is not enabled, it's disabled. So in order to enable video calls within CM, within Communication Manager, you first have to come here and enable this field. And once this is enabled, what you'll see are two fields, uh, two additional fields below that which are used specifically to set the bandwidth limits for your video calls. So you can see here you have allow direct IP multimedia, maximum call rate for direct IP multimedia, and then the call rate for priority direct IP multimedia. And what you can do is just, in your mind anyway, replace the phrase direct IP multimedia with video. Essentially, this is specifically and only used for video calls within CM. So these two fields here define the bandwidth that will be allowed per call for video calls passing through Communication Manager. And by default, it's set to a pretty low value of, of 384k. And actually, that value would be too low uh, to allow or enable high definition video calls. For high definition video calls, you want at least 1024, uh, in other words, one megabit, or 2048 is even better because you're going to get higher quality video calls with, uh, with 2048 kilobits or two meg. So we'll go ahead and make those changes here to set up our, our codec set for high definition video calls. Now you might be wondering, well, how do you assign a codec set to an actual station, uh, whether it be H323 or SIP. And that's what we're going to look at now is how you can assign a codec set, first of all, to an H323 station. So my H323 station that we'll be looking at first is 555-3000. And you'll notice here on my station that I have IP video soft phone enabled. Um, if this were not a soft phone, if it were some physical video device, then you might just see the field say something like IP video instead of IP video soft phone there. Uh, but because this is a soft phone, you see it, it, it termed that way. Either is fine, but you do need to come here and make sure that your station is video enabled. Now what you need to do is look at the IP interface that your H323 station is registered to. So that's what we do here when we look at the Procker, which is the IP interface associated with the processor. And you notice it's assigned to network region one. And when we look at network region one, we see that it's using codec set number one, which is the codec set we just made our changes to a little bit earlier to enable video. That's the way you assign an H323 station to your codec set. Now, it is possible to assign your H323 station to a different codec set as well using the IP network map. You can see here if my station were in the range of 10.1.1.0 through 2.255, it would actually be associated with region two and it would use whatever IP codec set region two is assigned instead of what we just saw in region one. So it's important to remember that this will override your settings from the IP interface. Now for SIP stations, it's a little bit different. SIP stations register through a SIP trunk. And you'll notice here that our SIP trunk that we're using for our SIP stations has a far end network region assigned as number one, which means it's using IP network region one. And any stations associated with that SIP trunk would be assigned to that network region. 
And again, that's using codec set number one. So now let's go back to our codec set and take a look at these two different types of call rates in a little bit more detail. You might have wondered, well, what's the difference between priority and standard video calls as you see the two fields there on the screen? And really priority is primarily used for calls that uh, perhaps an executive might make or there are other ways to place priority video calls uh, that allow you to segment your users. So what you might say is, well, I want to change the maximum call rate for standard video call rate calls to a lower amount of bandwidth than the priority video calls. And that's okay. Some customers choose to do that. So your, your standard video calls would get just a, a lower quality video, use less bandwidth than the priority. Now the priority video is actually assigned via the class of service. So if we go back to our station here, we see that it's assigned to class of service one there on the right. And if we look at class of service one, here on page number two is where we'll find the priority video field. We can see that for class of service one, the priority IP video is set to yes. So that station would be able to place priority video calls and use the higher quality bandwidth setting that we saw there on the codec set. And that's really all there is to configuring a CAC for video calls in Communication Manager 6.0.1. Thank you for your time today. We hope that this information was useful and we welcome your comments, questions, and feedback via email at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. Thank you for choosing Avaya.